When we think of military costs, we often pay most attention to the big ticket acquisitions. The US Army wants 582 anti-tank missile systems. That's running them about $163 million. Want to upgrade a brigade's worth of Abrams main battle tanks? Well over $900 million. But new acquisitions are only a piece of the budgetary pie. In 2022, Army acquisitions in R&D accounted for $37.3 billion in spending, as opposed to the total $178 billion. The less sexy aspect is the ongoing cost of running units. Not only the combat units themselves, but also the logistics and support units they need to fight. In this episode, we're comparing the costs of different types of units in the US Army, as well as some cross-branch comparisons, like an armor brigade versus an aircraft carrier, for example. Imagine you're a single 27-year-old American who makes a median income of $41,000. For those with an employer, when it comes tax time, about $3,100 is withheld for Social Security and Medicare specifically. But after lowering your taxable income with a standard deduction, an additional $3,200 of federal income tax goes to a variety of programs, including the military. National defense makes up about 12% of federal spending, but when excluding Social Security and Medicare, defense comprises 17.8% of the remainder. So out of that 3200 for the sake of extreme simplicity, let's say $573.73 goes to the military as a whole, while $133.14 goes to the army. Of this, $49.29 goes to personnel costs, like pay, housing, and subsistence allowances. $49.44 goes to operations and maintenance, and $27.90 to procurement and research. Or, in other terms, $2.36 is what it takes to fund an active duty army armored brigade combat team. I just wanted to ground you guys with some human numbers because it's nothing but unrelatable morbillions from here. Now what exactly is the army funding? The forces the Congressional Budget Office are concerned with are brigade combat teams, aviation brigades, and special operations forces which include the 75th Ranger Regiment, 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, and the Green Berets. The brigade combat teams are the maneuver forces, and the Army currently has 32 on active duty and 28 in the National Guard. This is enough to deploy 16 at a time. The Army also has 16 active duty aviation brigades and 12 in the reserve components. For budgetary purposes, the costs aren't just limited to the personnel and materiel in the combat units. For every 10 soldiers in combat units, there are 13 in support units and 5 in administration. For example, the Armored Brigade Combat Team, known for its Abrams main battle tanks and Bradley fighting vehicles, is currently templated out for 4,244 personnel and maximum strength. That includes about 1,200 soldiers in its organic logistics units. But for budgetary purposes, the ABCT actually eats up 16,330 personnel. This number could be called a brigade slice, which includes outside support, service, and admin needed for a BCT to function. This number doesn't go down substantially between different types of brigades. However, National Guard brigades require about 3,000 less personnel, mainly because they have one-fourth the administrative overhead. Active and National Guard brigades require the same amount of combat support and sustainment. As well, pay for National Guardsmen is far less, being a part-time force. National Guard pay made up only 13.6% of all Army personnel costs in 2022, despite being 33.2% of the force. Operations and maintenance costs were also seven times greater for the active duty army than the Guard, so there are significant cost savings in the National Guard units like for like. In terms of dollars, the active duty army spends about $3.2 billion operating and supporting one armored BCT, $3.1 billion on a striker BCT, and $2.9 billion on an infantry BCT. In the National Guard, meanwhile, an armored brigade costs $910 million per year versus $850 million for a striker brigade and $780 million for an infantry brigade. 
In aviation brigades, the disparity is similar, costing an average of $690 million in the active component and $210 million in the reserve components. So if 17 average Walmart stores pooled their sales revenue for a year with an astronomical amount of creative counting, they could afford one National Guard Armored Brigade combat team. But this is also only taking into account the federal side of National Guard funding. National Guard units generally remain under state control until federalized, and can be used by governors for state-specific emergencies, although they have to meet federal standards. So states also have their own independent military budget, albeit with a high level of federal funding. For example, in 2019-2020, California spent about $132 million on its Army National Guard and received about $549 million in federal funds. So what are the takeaways? Armor brigades do generally cost more to operate than lighter infantry brigades, about $240 million a year more on average. But this is only an 8% difference. National Guard brigades, by contrast, are generally three and a half times cheaper from a federal perspective than their active duty counterparts. Support and admin is also most of the cost of maintaining a combat unit. In an active duty armored BCT, for example, only one fifth of the cost is spent within the brigade itself. The rest is spent on overhead and support units like logistics and engineers. But on to our news segment, how much fighting China will take away from the army budget, where we compare army brigades to various navy and air force things. The biggest of big ticket navy assets are its nuclear powered aircraft carriers, clocking in at $1,470,000,000 per year. One carrier alone is about half an active duty armored brigade. But when you make a carrier strike group with its carrier, air wing, one Ticonderoga-class cruiser, and four Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, the annual price tag comes out to roughly $3,540,000,000, although CSGs are fluid and vary in composition. This data considers replenishment ships as necessary indirect support for combat ships and are included in the totals. That's a whole armored brigade, plus $380 million in excess. As for the Air Force, their most expensive type of squadron is the B-2 Bomber Squadron, which costs $2.1 billion a year, although they do only have one. But how many F-16 squadrons equal an armored brigade? About 12, apparently. Although the CBO is assuming a notional 12 aircraft squadron due to the fact that Air Force squadrons vary in composition. By contrast, an armored brigade currently buys four and a half F-35 squadrons, figuratively speaking. Interestingly, each of the Air Force's Minuteman III squadrons serving America's intercontinental ballistic missiles costs $520 million. With a total of eight such squadrons, our nuclear ICBM deterrent is equivalent budget-wise to 1.3 armored BCTs. If you want to play with this budgeting stuff, I've linked the CBO's interactive force structure tool in the description, which lets you see what increasing or decreasing certain capabilities does money-wise. And if you want to learn more about what's behind combat units, check out this video on the complex logistics behind keeping tanks fueled during combat overseas. We'll see you over there.